Do you still imagine? Do you still, what do they call it when we're in school, daydream? Do you find yourself staring out a window at points? Do you find yourself just sitting there and, and someone's trying to get your attention and, and, and they finally get your attention and you're like, oh, oh, wait a minute. And then you realize that you were in another place. You were in another thought. You were beginning to think about other things and it captivated you. And you know, that's the thing with, with, when you imagine. Imagination captivates you. It holds you, not hostage, but it holds your attention to a place where you are drawn to it, where you're stuck, you're focused on it. You know, a lot of times we, we get to that place and we tell people, hey, no more daydreaming. Straighten up, pay attention. Don't do this, don't do that. And we, we take people as we get older, because we're older, we tell them, you can't imagine no more, stop doing that. We want all of our kids to think and dream and imagine, but as we get older, we're, we're, we're told, no, you got to work, you got to do this, you got to do that. Stop imagining and just do what you're supposed to do. But God never intended for you nor me to stop imagining. He created us with an imagination. You see, the Word tells us that what? He created us in His likeness and in His image. Think about that for just a moment with me this morning, or this evening, I should say. I'm lost at the time. Y'all, it's daylight out right now. It's throwing me off. But think about that for a moment. Look right here around you. Go back 50 years ago. Could you have imagined things looking like they look now? Go back 100 years from now. Could you imagine things being the way they are today? Go back before there was airplanes. Go back before there was cars. Go back before there was computers and cell phones and all those things. And think for a moment about that time. Imagination has come a long ways. It's brought us a long ways. It's done a lot of things. And, and those, those, I mean, just think about that. The first person to think, I want to make a computer. Well, what is a computer? The first person to think that in a giant box, because in that time it would take up a whole room, I'm going to put together a structure that's going to compute things at a faster rate than my mind can work and help us out. Imagine someone putting those things down. Imagine someone saying, you know what? I see too many of my friends and too many of my family dying, so I am going to figure out what's wrong with their heart, and I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix the eye that's blind. I'm going to do these things. I'm going to take my knowledge and I'm going to apply it. And I'm going to say, we're going to do this. We're going to make this happen. You know, we have a father. God, our father, that has the best imagination in the world. Have you ever just sat out in the grass in the trees? And when you sit there, just begin to look. Look as if God was looking. Look at the things he created, the intricacies in the leaves on the tree, the intricacies of the grass leaves, the intricacies of the insects and everything about it. Imagine that, that on the, 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 I don't want to say this, on his very thought processes, not only was he caring for you, but he was caring for you enough to design this world that we live in so that it could sustain us. Imagine that, that when he thought about you before you were ever in your mother's womb. That he looked at you and he, he knew what you were going to need. And he already began to create it. He knew every part of us and everything we would need. Why? Because he's all knowing. Because he's all powerful. Because he has an imagination that's out of this world. We, we put God in a box and we say, God, this is you. This is where you fit. This is the church. This is, this is serving you. This is Christianity. And he's trying to get you out of the box and say, hey, listen, I'm in everything. There's so much more that we can do. There's so much more that we have not even tapped into. So I want to ask you that question, what does it mean to imagine? What does it mean to imagine? Does it mean you're a slacker? 
Does it mean you don't care? Does it mean you, you're lost in a fairy tale world? Let me tell you, when you imagine what you're doing is you're forming a mental image of something that's not actually present to any of our senses. When you imagine you're going beyond hearing, you're going beyond seeing, you're going beyond smelling, you're going beyond tasting, you're going beyond touching, and you are tapping into a place that God has given you. A place that's close to God. A place where, where God does his best when you are fully vulnerable to him, when you imagine what God wants you to do. When you imagine how God wants you to use, be used. Pastor Chris talked about the trip that I'm leading to Senegal, to Indium. You never know what's going to happen. You never know how those things, and I'm trying to imagine in my mind what the West African desert of Senegal is going to be like and how I'm going to deal with 120 degree heat. And I'm trying to imagine all these things, but you know what I'm imagining more? How, Lord, how are you going to use us as we build that school, as we reach those families to continue the work of the kingdom there? You see, when, when Brian Davis went over there, I've known Brian for a long time. When he went over there, he knew that that area there in India was primarily Muslim. And they had nothing to do with Christ. And, and they went to teach English. And he started teaching English. And long story short, they taught English. They taught math. Then they started teaching the Bible. He never could have imagined without God and what God wanted to do there. But he turned loose and he let God have a hold of him. And he started that school. And now, think about it. Who would have ever thought that a Muslim nation would come to a, a Christian missionary and say, we want you to build another school. We want you to teach the Word of God because what you're doing changes our people. Imagine what would happen if we would stop doing day by day and start living as he's called us to live, doing as he's called us to do, imagining beyond our walls. I want you to do something with me tonight. I want everyone to close their eyes. We're going to use our imaginations. So just close your eyes. You hear that gentle roar. I'm going to be quiet. Listen to the roar of the air conditioner. Now take that roar and turn that into the ocean breeze coming off the ocean the waves are crashing on the bank you're sitting on that beautiful sand beach the palm trees are there it's it's quiet it's peaceful anybody gone there with me yet raise your hand you're, you can feel it you're there you're imagining what that's like you know why you can do that? Because it's something that's normal to us. It's something that, that, that we read about, we see about, we hear about, and we can envision. Or maybe you've gone and you've enjoyed the beach, and you can imagine those things. But now then, close your eyes with me. I want you to do something else. Imagine right now that you're on a bus. And not just any bus. But the bus you're on is supposed to hold 100 people and there's 200 people in this bus. Imagine right now that all the windows don't go down. Imagine with me right now, it's the middle of summer. It's hot. You're sweating from every place you could ever sweat and then some. Imagine with me right now the smells that you're smelling of all of these people who are sweating. And imagine with me right now that someone's sitting next to you has a plan to kill you. Has a plan to destroy you. Can you imagine that? No, we can't. No, we can't, but millions of people around this world, because of their faith in Christ, in crowded places, in, in third world countries, or in conditions like I just spoke about, and they don't know where the next attack's coming from. They don't know who's going to take them out. They, they, they only know. I mean, I've, I've, I've been around this, this country in, in 23 different countries. And I've seen things that I would never imagine and can't imagine. 
train cars with the, with, with the people packed so tight in there, there's no room to even breathe, but people packed on top, and they're just trying to get from one place to the next because it's hours upon hours upon hours to the next location. In America, we don't have to worry about that. We go get in our cars, we go get on a plane, we go get on a bus, and it's not crowded, and, and we pay our money, and we go do those things. But imagine not having the money to do those things. Imagine with me for just a moment what it would be like to truly give in and do what God wanted you to do. Go where God wanted you to go. Sometimes it's easy to believe. Sometimes it's easy to imagine things, but true imagination is in the thing that you can't see, you can't smell, you can't taste, you can't touch, you can't hear. It's in the impossible. And God's calling us to the impossible. He's calling us to imagine beyond this, this, this platform, beyond these walls of this church, beyond the wing of the church, beyond the gym of the church, beyond the parking lot, beyond our property even. He's calling us to imagine beyond all those things and set our hearts on the future. Like I talked about this morning, looking to eternity, looking at those that need to come with us and focusing on the loss. So let me ask you this question. Why should we imagine? Why should we imagine? I'm going to give you a few answers. But how about this one right here? Because the Holy Spirit empowers you to imagine. Do you know that tonight? Does that ring true in your heart? Do you know that the Holy Spirit himself is empowering you to imagine what God wants? Imagination has no limits. No limits. Today, they are trying to finalize and make it approved by the, by the drug administration that they can put a plastic heart in your body that will pump just like the one God created. They're 3D printing all of this medical stuff because they're imagining people without a disability. They're imagining people without a problem. They're trying to recreate all these things. There's a great imagination that's out there. But imagine this with me tonight. What if we, this body, this group of people that call ourselves Christians, begin to say, God, I don't just pray for the people outside of these walls. I don't just hope that the people outside of these walls come in, but we begin to imagine ways to actually go out of our walls and bring the people to Jesus, bring Jesus to the people. Imagine if we could change what we do. We sang a song that night that says, when you speak, when you move. Somebody finish that for me. You know it. Come on, Kylie, go ahead. You move all our fears. What else? Come on, tell me the rest of it. It moves us to tears. What else? We fall on our knees. When we can imagine what God looks at, what God wants, when we have the heart of God, He breaks us. He doesn't break us so that we're vulnerable and beat up, but He breaks us so that we can see what He sees, so that we can love the way He loves, so that we have the heart and the mind and the thought processes that, that He has, so that we can accomplish the great commission in which He's challenged us and charged us to do. We are designed to imagine. Turn with me tonight in your Bibles to the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2, many of you know it by heart, but I want to take you back to the, to the place where we were designed. Now Joel, the prophet Joel, he came and, and, and Joel, he gave this prophetic word, and in this prophetic word was punishment, and in this prophetic word was forgiveness, and in this prophetic word was an empowerment that comes through the Holy Spirit. So look with me at verse 28, it says this, then... After doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see vision. And in those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. Imagine with me. Joel speaking a word, bringing a truth, 
Think about that. Your sons and your daughters will what? Prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young women will, will see visions. Think about that for a moment. If we saw and acted and did like God said we could do. All through what? The power of the Holy Spirit. People who live without 